Second type of production strategy is chase strategy. Chase strategy is producing the amounts demanded at any given time. Inventory levels remain stable while production varies. So it is just the opposite of level strategy. So as we saw in the level strategy that inventory levels varied there and production was constant. Here it is just the opposite. Inventory levels remain stable while production varies. The company must have enough capacity to be able to meet the peak demand. It may involve hiring and training as well as laying off employees. Sometimes they have to put uh, on extra shifts and overtime. So the main advantage of chase strategy is that inventories can be kept to a minimum. It is used when inventory holding costs are high and costs of changing capacity are low. So we have to chase the demand. So as the demand changes, so we have to change the production as well. So that is the basic idea of chase strategy. And it is more appropriate for make to order products. So we, we cannot produce actually until we have the confirmed orders to produce something. So the chase strategy is more suitable for make to order products. Basically, we will be requiring two formulas to solve the S and OP grid for a chase strategy. One is for planned backlog in a period T, so that will be equal to planned backlog from the previous period plus forecasted orders in current period minus planned production in current period. So this planned backlog from previous period plus forecasted order in this period is actually something that we have to deliver. Minus planned production is something that uh, we have so difference of the two will be, if the difference is positive, that shows uh, the backlog that we are planning to carry. And same is true for the actual backlog formula. So actual backlog in a period is equal to actual backlog from the previous period plus actual orders in current period minus actual production in current periods. So again, this is something that we owe. That is something that we have to deliver either from the previous period or from uh, the actual orders of the current period minus this is something that we have produced or this is something that we are having. So again, if the, if the difference is positive, that is the actual backlog that we are carrying uh, in this period. So this is a typical S and OP grid for a make to order production environment. And the strategy is J strategy. So in make to stock, uh, case we had uh, the forecast here, here we are having the bookings, but basic idea is the same. What we are having as a forecast and what we are having as actual order. So basic idea in this first part is the same. Same is true, the for, uh, same is true for the second part of the grid. So what we are actually uh, producing and what we plan to produce and then we can calculate the difference. But this third element is different here. We were having the finished goods inventory for a make to stock grid, but here we are having the backlog for a make to order case. So that is the basic difference between MTS and MTO, S and OP grid. So using the two formula, formulas that we saw, we can calculate the planned backlog as well as the actual backlog. And then we can convert that backlog into the backlog of weeks for the next period. So for example, if you are having a certain backlog at the end of January, then how much that backlog is equals to in terms of number of weeks for the next month that is February in this case. So we can convert this backlog uh, in terms of the backlog uh, in number of weeks. So this quantity can be converted into uh, time, that is the number of weeks. So we will see these calculations uh, with the help of Excel. So this is the typical S and OP grid for a make to order production environment and we will be using a uh, chase strategy. So we are having the forecast of order, then we are having actual orders, 
So just like in a make to stop grid, we can calculate the difference of actual and forecast. Then we can calculate the cell using the column sign and then fixing the first D9 cell. So same is for the difference as a percentage. So that will be equal to this divided by the sum of the actual orders using column sign fixing the first D8 cell. That is the difference as a percentage. So we can drag these cells to kill. Sorry. We can drag these cells to calculate the monthly difference, to calculate the cumulative difference, as well as to calculate the difference as a percentage. So the difference is negative in all cases. So that means that the actual orders have been less than <clears throat> what we forecast it to, to have. So of course that negative difference converts into negative difference as a percentage as well. So we received lesser orders than we actually were expecting, than we were actually forecasting. Now we can calculate the difference for the production as well. So again, actual production minus plant production. And then uh, cumulative difference as a percentage. So this divided by some of the actual production. So you can drag to calculate the monthly difference for the rest of the months calculate the cumulative difference as well as difference as a percentage. And you could see here as well that the, all the differences are negative. So that means that actual production has been less than the planned production. So you could look for the reasons why that happened, that we produced less than what we planned to produce. Now the final part of this grid is the order backlog. So we have to calculate uh, the planned backlog and actual backlog. And remember that having backlog is not something bad uh, for a make to order production environment. So there is a difference between backlog and late order. So backlog is actually the quantity that you have promised to produce, but you have not yet produced but actual delivery rate might not have reached yet. So the backlog is some, the quantity of order that you have to deliver. So it is different than and the late order. So you should keep that in mind. So planned backlog for January will be equal to planned backlog from previous planning horizon plus forecast for January minus planned production for January. So previous backlog plus what you are planning to uh, deliver in this month, that is the forecast minus what you are planning to produce. So what you're planning to produce will reduce the backlog. So that is the basic idea. That will be equal to 25. So for the month of February, it will be equal to planned backlog from January plus forecast for February minus planned production for February. So that will be equal to 35. And you can drag to calculate for uh, March and April as well.
Similarly, the actual backlog will be equal to actual backlog from previous uh, planning horizon plus actual orders for January minus actual production for January. So the actual backlog that you're carrying at the end of January is 27. Similarly for February, the actual backlog for February will be equal to actual backlog from January plus actual orders for February minus actual production for February. So actual production is reducing the actual backlog. So that will be equal to 34 and you can calculate for March and April in a similar manner. The difference will be equal to actual backlog minus planned backlog for the four months. The cumulative difference will be equal to sum of the differences for the uh, different months. So for January, it is just one quantity. So that will be equal to two and you can drag for February, March and April. Now this difference as a percentage will be equal to this cumulative difference divided by sum of the actual backlogs. Use the colon sign so that we have not to apply the formula in each cell. So for January it is 7.4, for February it is 1.6, then 2 and then minus 7.5. So as a whole, the difference has been negative. So that means the actual backlog has been less than the planned backlog. So that is something good. So the actual backlog has been less than what you plan to have as a backlog. So you are having lesser backlog in reality. So that is something good. Now we can convert this backlog for different periods uh, for the next period. So how much worth this backlog is in, is in terms of number of weeks for the, for the next month. For example, this actual backlog of 27 is being carried to February. So how much extra work in simple words has to be done in February to meet, uh, to meet this backlog of 27? So that will be equal to this actual backlog divided by planned production for February divided by four. We are dividing by four because we are calculating backlog in terms of number of weeks. But if you are calculating it in terms of number of days, then you have to just, uh, divide by number of days in the month. So the concept will remain the same. So this backlog of 27 is worth the working of 2.4 weeks for uh, the month of February. So you have to work in a way 2.4 weeks extra in the month of February in order to meet this backlog. Similarly for February, this backlog of 34 is equal to a backlog of 2.72 weeks for the month of, uh, for the month of March. You can drag. So this backlog of 34 is equal to backlog of 3.04 weeks for the month of April. And similarly, this backlog of 35 is equal to a backlog of 2.8 weeks uh, for the month of May and so on. So the basic uh, parameter in an s and OP planning for a make to order production environment is the amount of backlog that you are carrying. Of course, the lesser the backlog is, the better it is. So I hope you have got the basic concept. Thank you.